All right, so far we've got a button, we've got a horizontal slider, we've got a vertical slider, we've got a 2D slider. There is one more slider type that I want us to build because it is just so, so sassy. And we're going to use a couple of different skills to do that. The kind of slider that I want to build this time is I want a slider where I can not only use this uh, left and right action to set the value, I want to be able to actually enter that numerically and have it override what's going on. So how can we make that happen? We're going to start by adding a container. Uh, and this is good, the most intense one, so bear with me here. The first step is we're going to add a container. Now we've got to dive inside of our container and we need to first add a field and then we also need to add a slider. Now I've been doing a little bit of futzing ahead of time to figure out some of the precise dimensions here for us. So I already know uh, that what I want to do is I want to set the width of this particular field to be 36. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my slider's width at 100. Now the other thing I need to change right out the gate from my field is I'm going to need to come up here and instead of having a string, I need to change this to being a, being a float. So I want specifically for this to be a decimal valued number. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my container over here, right? So this is one level up. And for my container, I'm going to set its width to be 136. Right? So it's the width of the field plus the slider. And then I'm going to set its height to be 20 because lo and behold, that is the height of both the slider and the field. Now, this still doesn't look quite right because my slider is being drawn right on top of my field. All right, how do I fix that? I'm going to fix that uh, over here in my container by setting the alignment to be left to right. So now I've got this guy over here, where I can type in a number, 0 0.45, for example, or 0.45, by 4, and I've got a slider. Whew. Okay, good. So far, so good. Let's practice right away some of the things that we just learned. So let's go ahead and take a look at our slider here from the outside. We're going to dive into our slider on the inside. Middle mouse click. We're going to grab a math. We're going to drop that down here. I'm going to go ahead in my math, my range, right, 0 to 1. And I'm going to change that. I want it to be 1 at the bottom and at the top. I want it to be me, parent, the parameter called width. Then I need to subtract from that the operator called knob. and the parameter from that, which is its width, and then you need to add one to that. Okay, good. Then over here in knob, for the x position, I need to go ahead and get rid of this very fancy expression that's already here. And instead, I'm going to ask for the operator called math1. And out of math1, I want the channel called v1. Okay. So now I should have a slider, Ooh, excellent, one and one, there's a little bit of a gap on either end of that, perfect. I also need to go ahead and change uh, the height of this, right? I want to make sure that I subtract one from either side, so that's two, one from the top, one from the bottom. And then I need to set this guy's uh, vertical justification to be center. Okay. Whew. Looking good, looking good. That's um, what I'm after, right? Excellent. Okay, now comes the fun stuff. Because I want to do some things that are a little more fancy. Um, because what I would like to do is I would like this number to override what's going on in here. And how am I going to make that work? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a select dot. 
The select dat is going to allow me to dive here inside of the field and grab this out one and drop it right over here. So now the number that's in this guy, and let's go ahead and change it to maybe like 0.68, automatically gets populated over here into this select dat. We're going to start to use dats a little bit more as we do some scripting and we do uh, uh, some of the more complicated work that goes along with building our interfaces. And so this is where it gets intense. But that's okay. Don't be scared. It's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. If this select idea is too intense for you and you're like, Matt, I don't get it. That is like not, doesn't make any, ah. We could instead drop down an in. We know how to do this, right? We want to pull a value in out of this guy. We want to send a value out. Oh, it already has an out. I don't even need to do that. Excellent. All I need to do is come down here and connect it. Boink. Oh, look at that. That's friendly. We remember how to do all those things. Yeah. Lovely. Let's leave it there for right now. You want to use the select? That's excellent. Love it. If the select thing is like too intimidating, then leave it in. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to now convert this guy, right? We need to change this dat into being um, a chop. And specifically, I'm going to use a technique called overriding. So let's scoot this guy over a little bit here, and let's drop in an operator called an override. Now, overrides are sassy uh, and really helpful because it allows the last value that changes to be the thing that updates what's going on here. Now, in order to work with this override, I need to be able to plug a chop in, right? Because we know we can't plug in things of different families. So let's go ahead and drop down a DAT2. So the DAT2 is going to convert what's coming in here from the DAT into a chop. So this is a DAT2 chop, I'm converting value types. I'm going to plug this here into my override, not into everything, heavens to Murgatroyd. And I'm going to go ahead and rearrange that just because I like my network to be pretty. That is how I feel about the world. And then I want to make sure my override is plugged here into my math and I get rid of this panel one. Okay, Whew. much better. So now what I've got is this very uh, problematic situation, right? My knob has got an error. Things look a little bit out of control. Let's go ahead and fix our DAT2. So in my DAT2, the first row is values, excellent. And the first column is also values, fabulous. So now I've got just Chan1 here. Now I can't change that over here. I could put a rename in. That would be a fine way to, to kind of fix this problem, right? We know how to do that. But for now, let's just go ahead and come over here to our knob and let's just go ahead and change our expression because that's just as easy for us to do. All right, so now we're, st we're getting close. So I can move this slider, great, and I can see, let's go ahead and actually view this. And we should be, whoa, too much, too much. Right, the slider is uh, making some action happen. I should be able to put in like 0, 0.25. five. And I can see that the value I put in here changes the position of the slider. Oh my goodness gracious, am I uh, so excited right now. You have no idea. This is a dream come true. Except, you know what, I'm real needy because I would like this to then populate back over here. I'd like this number to be consistent with what's going on in my slider. Because otherwise, how do I know? Okay, so we're going to leave Sliderville for one second. Or actually, let's go ahead and move this over here. And we're going to scooch some things around just a little bit. Because we need to look here inside of our field. So looking here inside of our field, we can see that lo and behold, we've got this thing called string. And when we change this value, it changes string. Okay, I like that. But how could I make it so that when I move this slider, it changes this value over here? Well, now we're going to write a script. We're going to go ahead and crank it up to 11. 
and do some very fancy work here in Touch Designer. So I'm going to go to DAT, and I want a chop execute DAT. Now a chop execute is going to perform the operation that's embedded in a script uh, on some very specific conditions. So in this case, what I want to have happen is whenever this value changes, which is this panel value right here, when this value changes, I want it to in turn change this number over here. Okay. To do that, I'm going to take my panel, I'm going to drag it on top of my chop execute. And we can see that's populated this field right here. So the chop that it's looking at, the channel operator that it's paying attention to, is this one called panel1. Now when we look here inside of this chop execute dat, it's going to look really intimidating um, and your armpits are going to start sweating and that's okay, take a deep breath. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look to change uh, the scripting section in here that corresponds to the toggle over here. So in my case, I want any time the value changes for my script to run. So this is right, perfect. I'm going to make this viewer active, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a couple spaces. And what I need to do is I need to make sure that I write this script indented. Python is a uh, white space um, sp dependent, so it really matters to Python where the white space is. So we just have to take advantage of that. Okay, what am I going to do? So when this value changes, what is it that I want to have happen? When this value changes, I want to change, I want to alter, I want to overwrite this thing right here. So I'm going to look for the operator, and we're going to do a little bit of relative positioning, right? Dot, dot, slash. So look one network above me. That's here. Okay, in the network above me, look for the thing called field one, okay? Let's dive inside of field one. Then inside of field one, look for the thing called string. Okay, this is the thing that I want to change. What do I want to change? I want to change the cell that's at the zero, zero position, right? Zero, zero, this guy right here. I want to overwrite that. What do I want to overwrite that with? I want to equals overwrite that with value the value that's coming out of this chop right here. Now, let's look at what happens. This isn't going to be quite right. We're going to be not totally happy with this. Mmm, drat. That is a bit trash. Like, that is too, too many numbers. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, so let's use one more Python method to fix this. Let's round that. So we're going to round value, and we want to round it to have two digits after the decimal. And now, lo and behold, ooh, that's looking pretty good, right? I'm pretty happy with that. So this sliding action drives this number. If I change this number, it changes the position of my slider. Whoa, life is almost too good to bear. The last thing that I need to do is I need to give this guy a background. So let's go ahead and drop in a text stat. Let's call it BG for background. Let's go ahead and set its dimensions based on the parent me dot parent parent par width height. You know the drill. We're going to turn this down. And let's go ahead and just set this to maybe like 2, 12, how about 11? Yeah, better. And let's give it a, mm, let's do the thing we did before. Let's uh, drop in a table. We're going to use the table to go ahead and drive what's going on here inside of our text. We can get rid of this thing called derivative. We don't need that anymore. And slider plus val. Okay, good. Last step is we're going to come up here and we're going to set the panel, the background this, look inside of me for a background. All right, pretty groovy.
Now, there is one last thing that you know matters to me, but might not matter to you. You might want to change the kind of like look of this a little bit. If we uh, let's look at this at its actual size, mm, it's hard to notice, right? It, it looks pretty consistent back and forth. That's probably okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and call this good enough, right? I like that. So what have we got? Out of this process, we have built uh, a couple of different types of interface elements. We've got a button that changes, right? So our button changes based on its state. Its name changes. I like that a lot. We've got, an, we've got a horizontal slider that's got these fixed dimensions here, right? So it fits inside of this container entirely, and it has a name. We've got a vertical slider that does the same thing, which I like a lot. We've got a 2D slider that we can move around, that we get X and Y position out of. Excellent. And then last but not least, we've got this slider here where we can both change this horizontal value and we can change the numeric value. Uh, and there's a little bit of feedback that happens there, right? They control one another. All right, so these are some of the primary ingredients that we are gonna uh, get after. And in fact, um, we're going to practice making these a whole lot um, with these next assignments that are coming up. All right. Happy programming, everyone, and looking forward to class.